What's going down, man? It's your boy, Donnie Houston. We celebrating three years of chopping it up right here on the Donnie Houston Podcast. Go to DonnieHoustonRail.com right now and get you one of these brand new Choppers t-shirts available in the mono black, tight white, in the gray tape edition. Oh, yeah. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Subscribe to Donnie Houston Podcast, man. Oh, yeah. going down this down Houston podcast i am Donnie houston uh check it out man we got a special guest man you know what i'm saying a, a real h time legend man real texas legend you know what i'm saying uh hey man he gave me one of my first starts you know what i'm saying uh as far as just with getting records on the radio and you know what i'm saying taking me on the road and just really showing me what this music you know thing is really about man and uh boy represent that north side and i don't hold that against him you know what i'm saying yeah. <laughs> but, but hey man this is my boy man slim thug man aka big slim what's going down what's going on down in houston man first of all congrats on the new platform man you know i would know you so to see you build a platform i'm proud of you kid keep up the good work i love the culture you know what i'm saying so i love to just you know i'll be watching y'all it's a whole lot of south side favoritism on this show i would say <laughs> It's a lot Somebody of, uh, told me that was like, man, Slim said Donnie and Houston don't have nobody from the north on there. Nobody from the north. He just said the north side gave him his own start. You know what I'm saying? He said it on his own show. You know what I'm saying? But nah, yeah. but that ain't true, bro. I done had Paul on here. I done had J-Dog. You done been on here before before it was on video. So early. People you know? don't even remember. People don't even remember. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we day one. Yeah, know? yeah. So we good. Sure. If you don't know, uh, Donnie Houston produced Peaceful, one of my favorite songs I ever did. So, you know. We got history for real, you know. Definitely um, did a lot of shows together. We did a lot of other songs also, but mm. yeah, that was like, that's the one, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's amazing. Man, I'm happy for you, kid. I love to see the growth. That's the thing about being around for a minute. You get to see, you know, people who you work with and you get to see them grow, you know what I'm saying? And I love to see that, man. It's amazing. I appreciate it. I had told somebody earlier, I said, Slim gonna come in here with some shit to make me look real poor. <laughs> so I brought my little time for shades. My say, this nigga gonna have on some crazy shit, I'm man. Gonna so you, let me try, to, tell let me you try to match with this nigga a little bit. I man. had on my workout outfit, bro. My little, and it was Nike. And my, uh, it was, I had on the Yeezy Crocs. I was finna come over here like that. And B Dunn and Gavin voices just was ringing in my ear like, man, put on the chain, put on the chain. <laughs> They hate me because I never bring chains. I didn't bring no big chain to the BET Awards. I ain't bring no big chain to Harley shit. Like, so people he'd be like, man, niggas think you broke, nigga. They, in Houston, we know you out here doing your thing, but niggas everywhere else think you broke. They think you fell off. You got to, you know what I'm saying, turn up sometimes. <laughs> so that's why I went ahead and gone ahead and got dressed a little bit, man. I know he's still going to be mad I ain't wear the other one. <laughs> yeah. Why you ain't wear both chains, nigga? Nah, you know that's that that's that's a uh, that's some new shit. I ain't never seen this one before. Yeah, this is new. This Emmett right here. Yeah, I've been going to him for a minute. Though. I always see you talking about him though. See, that's what people don't realize. Like, like I say, being around for a long time, it's uh, you get to see people grow. I was going by cha- like Emmett is from my neighborhood. Like basically, he don't live in the neighborhood, but K Bargain was the front of Scenic Wood on Homestead. It was right in the front of Scenic Wood. You know, I bought a chain from his big brother, Vinny, at age 15. You know, I used to buy jewelry from um, uh, Vinny when I was like 15 years old, like super young. So um, for the long, like we was like the first dude, Shot town Sleep Dog with the diamond chains. I remember, you know, you could see the, the diamond chain I used to wear on them old pictures. It, it looked like a little, you know, because that was before diamond chains was out like this. So uh, on the jury side, me and Emmett, we got a lot of history together. That lock I be wearing still to this day, he made that in like, oh, uh, 
I got that from him. I got that from him in like oh two. Them Southwest Gorilla dudes, what's his name? Pat, I believe his name mm-hmm. was. Like, do they have they ever talked about them on him? No, nah, no, nah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, but nah, they, they was yeah. killing the gang. Them dudes yeah. had the candy red shit and all that. Yeah, so uh, I remember he made it for him a long time ago, and then he ended up going to jail. And I he say, like, man, I got that motherfucker. I remember you said you. I was like, hey, I still got that lock, man. So you know, I seen Emmett them come from. Uh, Homestead to now on West Time, you know, same thing with TV Johnny. Like, I still call him TV Johnny. Like, I mean, I even used to call him Johnny Dane because that's where I know him from. And, um, King Johnny, you know what I'm saying? All of them. So it's like I seen everybody grow, you know, and it's it's amazing, man. I love to see it. Yeah, for sure. Man, I, I kind of got a bone to pick with you, though, bro, mm. because I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy and like really, it. I'm really elated on one side, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you ain't got this college degree. Right. But man, do you know I, what I had to do to get my shit, man? You know what I'm saying? And oh, I still, yeah. I didn't went to school, dropped out, graduated, came back, graduated with honors, and he just nigga come <laughs> make a few rap songs and they give him a damn degree, man. It's honorary. <laughs> it's honorary. You know what I'm saying? At the same time, but at the same time, it was real work, man. They did give us a lot of work to do. They said that the work we was doing, the uh, class would have to complete in a whole, you know, uh, semester or whatever, and. Uh, it was some real work, but I enjoyed it, man. It was really work that I was interested in, you know what I'm saying? And that's that's tough. That's the tough part about learning a lot of the times. Like, it be people teaching you about stuff you don't care about learning about. So, being at TSU, I was actually interested in what they was teaching me. That's why I was able to, you know, graduate top class with, you know. What yeah, you doing. excelled over there in that thing. Yeah. yeah. Man, it was beautiful, man. I was at home, you know, and then at the same time, like I said, I love the environment. And I'm grown now, so I can get focused. I can, you know, get off the bullshit and focus. So it was fun, though. How long How long did y'all actually shoot that? How long was that, man? How did it actually happen? Let's talk about that. Uh, so I got the call. I got a DM from Deion Sanders like, hey, man, uh, Call me right quick or something. So I called him. He like, hey, you know, um, they shooting the show in um, in Houston, College Hill Celebrity Edition or whatever. You know, um, I want you to get on there. I'm like, ah, right. he like, well, they, they shooting it. You got to go on there like two days or some shit. Like it was like that fast. Oh, it was finna start in two days. It's finna. You gonna have to go in like two days, like <laughs> and be gone, and you can't come out the house because. You, it's COVID protocol, you know, because if anybody gets sick, the show over. It's only going to be shooting for, so they keeping it closed and all that. Uh, so they was like, I was like, shit. Uh, he said he's going to have somebody uh, call me and tell me more information. They told me more information. She was like, hey, well, let me just send you the offer and see right quick. So they sent me the offer. I was like, man, I'll take it. You know, I ain't had nothing else lined up for my march that was matching that. So I said, <laughs> you know. I'll take it. So I did it, not knowing who was going to be on the show, you know what I'm saying? Just jumping out there knowing that I'm going back to college, you know what I'm saying? So That was a trip because I was like, I, I, I thought they, I thought it would have, that would have all been a thing, like we're going to put this group together and this and that. They just do They didn't tell it. me nothing, bro. They just told me to pull up. And I pulled up and I landed at Slim Thug on there with, I'm seeing NeNe Leaks. I'm like, are you fucking serious, bro? Like, how the <laughs> fuck did I get on the show with the reality queen? Like, I'm slim thug, like I'm not. I'm thinking I'm gonna see some of the most random people who never been seen on TV. Is Nene Leakes, is Ray J, Lamar Odom, Stacy Dash, Dream Dog, Big Frida, uh, India Love. Like I'm like, what? <laughs> this is crazy, man. So, how many of them people did you know before you got there? Ray J, just Ray J. I, I met Dream before, but we didn't really know each other. But I met her before. Uh, yeah, I didn't really meet nobody else. Nah, that was it. So it was like, it was it was crazy. It was just shocking to see like, damn, they put me on here with all these people who got names in this TV shit. Hmm. I ain't never did no TV shit, you know. So but it like, makes sense though. If you gonna shoot a show in, in Houston, Houston, then you being one of the I biggest names, then it make wanted me to be a guy, you know. I guess on 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 the city also. So it was cool though, man. I enjoyed the experience. I, I would say. It lasted like almost two months or a month and a half. I don't really know. You know what I'm saying? Honestly. No. And how long ago y'all shot it? That was March. That was oh, this year? March. Yeah, this year. We just shot that in March. No shit. Yeah. Got ghosts on y'all ass. Y'all ain't even know. Yeah, I ain't realize this shit. Right. Yeah, it was Damn. right. So, okay. Uh, 
because man, you ended up having like a couple of little viral moments. You know what I'm saying? One where yeah. you were just talking about how you don't really, you know, you too blessed to be stressed and all that. But this is like everyday slim talk, if you know me. Mm-hmm. So when I, if you know, so when I seen it, I'm like, oh, he's, you know, that's that's everyday shit. Every but day. then the 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 big Frida thing was like a huge deal because it's like right that whole conversation was that uh did that trip you out to see how that picked up, you know, like that. Yeah, I mean, like, really, I kind of, like, well, how they was like, oh, that was a moment, you know, when it happened to people who uh, was shooting the show, you know what I'm saying? But uh, really, it was just me being real, like, you know what I'm saying, man? You know, I just, I respect everybody, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, um, you know, um, I don't really pay attention to what, I'm on my own little planet on the cool, you know what I'm saying? So I don't really care what other people do. Uh, what they, you know, like, I'm, I can still be cool with whoever. Whatever. You can not believe in nothing I believe in, and we can still find some, you know, peace and ground, you know, and whatever, you know, so that's just the type of person I am. Because I hang around so many different type of people, you know, already being in Houston. So it's like, it wasn't nothing, you know, it was just, I wanted to jump out there, you know, uh, respectful to everybody, and you know, so... Frida was super cool though, you know what I'm saying? So it was, you know, it wasn't no issues at all with nobody in the house, you know what I'm saying? It was a good experience, you know, I actually feel like we gained friendship through that with everybody. Like, so everybody was, you know, getting along well. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Was, uh, what's, what's something that you took away from that? What was like the biggest learning experience from that? Uh, it was just really, uh, personally, stop boxing myself in so much like you know what i'm saying like i'm so stuck in you know being independent being uh able to do what i want to do kind of you know what i'm saying it kind of let me do whatever i want to do and if that's staying boxed out from everybody and just kicking it with my same you know rico and all my homeboys i've been with for the last 20 years like but at the same time like i should interact with more people get to know new people you know what i'm saying stuff like that so I'm working on that. Uh, what I love from the experience was just the cultural um, growth I got from being at a, a HBCU, TSU, you know what I'm saying? I learned a lot of history about the school, you know what I'm saying? Uh, being black, all that, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it was, like I say, it was stuff I was actually interested in. And uh, the professors and teachers that was, you know, excellent. So I had a good time. Yeah. What um did any other opportunities in the future come from that? From like, you know, people wanting you to do other things because now you've been seen in this light, you know what I mean, on on that type of stage? On the cool, bro, I don't even know. You know, like honestly, my my uh my uh management and all that shit just be so random, we don't know what the fuck going on. We'll get a call and we'll see what's going down when we get a call, but a lot of the shit be, you know, spur of the moment shit, like when I ain't got nothing like directly, oh yeah, it's going down. No, yeah, man. Talk about uh, with this whole thing with the with the the name change. They had the, that article go out that was saying how you you know want to mm-hmm. get away from the whole Slim Thug and just being Big Slim. You know, I'm too old to be rocking around calling myself a thug. I look it look tacky. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I'm just I'm forty about to be forty two next month. I don't want to be running around talking about I'm Slim Thug. Like you know what I'm saying? Like. That was the young slim, and I ain't thugging on nothing. I'm not out here busting nobody head or nothing. I'm at home smoking weed, chilling, looking for bad bitches. You know, like, I got a whole new mind frame. That was really more of a description than anything, being from the north, you know, looking rugged, you know, because we ain't give a fuck. Same outfit three days straight, braids not done, you know, just looking grilled out at 15, you know. It just was a... Uh, more of a description, you know, as for me being a rapper. Like, you know, I was so young uh, and able to get a little success off this rap shit at 17. Like, I ain't really have to, you know, do nothing crazy. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Man, talk about uh, what it meant to do the, to do the rodeo like that. Mm. The rodeo, uh, man, that shit was amazing, bro. Uh, big salute to OG Bun B. You know, for being able to headline something like that, he deserve it. You know, with the UGK, him and Pimp Foundation, man, they deserved it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it was an amazing night, man, to see us, like, not on no uh, top 10, top 100 rappers. You know, people on the billboard right now, now this straight, you know, Houston culture right here. You know what I'm saying? This is what everybody um, grew up on. It's the backbone of the city. 
And uh, we got to do all the classics, man, and go up there and represent, you know, with the right peers. It was, it couldn't get no better, man. It was amazing. I did it before with Beyonce. Like, we did that, that performance. That was amazing, you know what I'm saying? But to share the stage with all my peers, it was, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Man, where you at right now with the music and all that? Man, I ain't did shit, bro. Like, yeah, you been calling me, too. I got beats. You know, um, my crib got flooded out. Like, uh, really, I'm not even myself right now. I'm just smoking weed spaced out for the last year and a half because I ain't even just able to do my normal, you know what I'm saying, routine of what I do. DJ Thugger, you know, you know, y'all seen what I did every day. I ain't been able to do that. I've been out of my palace to apartment, you know what I'm saying, because of the winter storm. You know, I'm not tripping because I uh, ventured off and did different shit. But at the same time, I miss, you know, my routine or at least being able to have the freedom of creating when I want to. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking forward to that. Do you do you still care? Like, what is it about with music right now? Do you still care about, like, trying to be the best? Or it's just like, man, I'm just doing what I love. And Nah, I don't give a damn about being the best nothing. Hmm. I, like I say, man, I'm on my own planet, really. Like, I don't even feel like... Um, I do anything like every anybody else do, you know what I'm saying? So it's like uh, I'm just having fun, man. Really, like I'm Big Slim one day, I'm Sugar Daddy Slim the next day. I'm doing whatever I want to do out here. I'm King of the North. Let me do some old H Town Switcher High shit. I'm whatever I want to be when I want to be it, you know. And it's just it's fun. I'm not chasing a number one hit, you know. I'm not trying to satisfy labels or you know make marks to make money you know i'm just really doing the shit that i really vibe to and love like just culture music like texas shit you know what i'm saying like i'm not clout chasing my rapper friend saying give me a verse <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i'm not going over promotion you know i ain't making nobody you know listen to shit i'm just posting my shit and if you fuck with me fuck with it if you don't you know we good I'm just doing it for my people, man, because at the end of the day, bro, like, that's what I've learned and that's what I've been, you know, able to see a direct connect with a fan base, you know what I'm saying? Like, the shit I hear, I swear to God on my kids, I was just at the stepping thing today, and a dude, like, man, I'm from M-Town, I'm from M, bro, listen, you even helped me so much with, you know, just to hear those words from people saying, Yo, music helped me so much, you know what I'm saying, through this, you know, and that, I'm good. Like, you know, I feel like it's all worth it, you know, and that was, and last night at the bike ride, it was something else. I'm from Kansas, man. I was, I remember hearing this song and it made me clean my motherfucking lack up and now I come through, you know, that type of shit, you know. It ain't even for everybody. It's, you know, it's pushy music. So a lot of niggas ain't gonna wanna hear that. It's like, going to church niggas got to change a little bit you know what i'm saying so a lot of niggas don't want to be motivated a lot of niggas want to be you know stay the same and yeah. where they at you know so i understand that i ain't gonna go platinum but you know for the niggas i do touch you know what i'm saying it's all worth it bro and at the end of the day i still see all the fruits of the label you know however it come you know what i'm saying if it ain't sales it's whatever it is you know what i'm saying so I just stay blessed and, you know, stay out the way for the most part. Yeah, you still, I know y'all was doing the, the boss life, uh, the building and all that. You got any other businesses that you kind of got right now? That Man, really, like, over? I do, you know, certain investments and shit, but really I don't want to tie my time up too much in a lot of other shit, you know what I'm saying? I'm already busy enough, you know what I'm saying? Like, since I was 17, I was missing prom and shit, bro, like rapping, you know. You ain't go to prom? Like, I probably went to mine, but missing the girl I was mm -hmm. fucking with from, you know, sending other motherfuckers to go with, like, that type of shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, just because I was about my money so early that I was, you know, uh, chasing it more than I was chasing life, you know what I'm saying? So now I be having fun, man. I be doing what the fuck I want to do. And uh, that's where I'm at in life, bro. Like, I miss so many good parties, going to do shows and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like... Yeah, so it's like I do that shit. I'm gonna do that. I love doing music. I love doing shows, and it's gonna be rare that I turn down a bag. But at the same time, you know, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna live. I'm gonna take a lot more trips now, and you know, do the life part at least. Cause I'm, 
I'm 40, bro. You gotta, you gotta, you know, do it while you're young, while you can. You uh, you you, know, you mentioned the sugar daddy slim thing. You ain't thought about like getting married, married and all this. I know you got the kids and shit, but you ain't you ain't to that yet. You still like I'm you know, fixed, bro. It's it's tough. Like it's like <laughs> you know, most women you get married, you want to have a family, have kids. I'm fixed, bro. It's like I got three kids already. I done been through the child support shit. I got one left. You know what I'm saying? Mm. <laughs> it's like, bro. I don't, I don't see it, you know, I'll never say never, like, because it could be a motherfucker who just come in and change my life, like, it ain't that I gotta have 30 bitches, that ain't what my life is, it ain't like I'm, I have fun on Instagram, people got me so, like, you know, confused, because I joke with people, like, you know me, people know me who know me, but I fool so many people with all the crazy <laughs> shit I say, bro, it's funny to me, though, I love it. And I love when people are confused about me and don't really know who the fuck I am. Like, it's something I enjoy. It's like trolling motherfuckers, you know? So I'm cool with whatever people think, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, like, I don't even got the energy for too many bitches. A bitch who know me gonna laugh. It's like, nigga, you, if I brought me and my friend, you'll go to sleep on your, you know, or some shit like that. So, you know, I don't know. I ain't gonna never say never, but at the same time, I'm living my life right now. If five bitches is for me, I'm going to take that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. That's where I'm at. No type. I ain't counting that now. Whatever it is, it's going down. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, man, well, shit, we can go back then, man. Uh, back to the Slim Thug days, man. Talk uh, about just growing up on, on that north side, man. You know what I'm saying? Acres home and, and all that. And, you know, with your brothers and sister. You know what I'm saying? How y'all was getting it when y'all was that young. Because y'all was on y'all own for, the, for you know. Man, really, it was just, I'm the youngest of seven, man. So I always, and I'm tall, so I always got looked at as older than I really was, you know what I'm saying? I was 12 riding around my cousin while he hitting licks and shit, you know what I'm saying? And in the club parking lot, you know, just uh, understanding life, you know, and seeing what it is, like, especially Houston, Houston culture, you know what I'm saying? So I was getting woke up hearing the music through my older brother, you know, my cousins, you know, so that type of shit, like, and then I started rapping at like 12, you know, um, so I've been woke a long time in music, like with knowledge of the Houston culture, like I'm talking about all the way back to whoever, really, like, it's a lot of deep, I don't think you can fuck with me on a lot of shit with, you know, Houston, not, um, hey, music, I don't know. out of Houston. Hey. I don't know. I hey, mean, I don't, you, hey, you hey, remember the road hey, trips. Hey. I put you on a lot of shit. You put me on some shit. You put me on some shit. But a lot of right. that shit was coming from the north side, though, because it was, right, just, it was exactly. such a, a line in the sand. You know what I'm saying? saying? Like, nah, it's everything. See, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. See, I'm a little bit of everything. I know it all. A lot of the north side, uh, history get let left out you know what i'm saying for what you know it probably wouldn't even preserve right you know uh, honestly you know what i'm saying we ain't really we was just hustling you know we wasn't really thinking like okay let's keep this shit and you know what i'm saying make this shit available forever like you know cool. we, we just was mashing for for the cash right then you know so a lot of our history ain't preserved a lot of you know it's always gonna be this too you know i'm a realist so It's always South Side favoritism in the city of Houston because of Screwed Up Click, you know, and because DJ Screw started this, you know, he's definitely, and it, and it's, it's well respected and at the same time understandable. Like, I'm not denying it like it shouldn't be like that. I, I totally agree it should be like that. You know, they created the culture, you know what I'm saying? So it's always going to be like that, you know what I'm saying, in the eyes of the Houston public, you know, and I understand that. And I like being, and I believe that's what made me such a hustler, like being an underdog so many times. Like I felt like I got left out of so much stuff so many years. I had to play the background. I had to... uh not get the credit for still tipping, you know what I'm saying? All that type of stuff, like take the L's of so much stuff and just, you know, I didn't have the mentors or the uh, help from other people because I chose to be the boss, you know what I'm saying? And nobody wanted to help the boss, you know what I'm saying? Because he ain't want to help, he ain't want to work with him as far as like put him in the business. He wanted to do shit his way, you know what I'm saying? So it was minimum help, you know, but at the same time, I felt like that made me so strong, you know what I'm saying? 
and uh, ahead of the game, niggas just now talking about owning their masters. I always own my shit. I been rapping about this shit. I been championing this shit. You know what I'm saying? I been saying this shit. Like, to see niggas now, you know, just think about the waves. Look, Think about how many niggas walking around here with diamond grills in their mouth. We made that shit famous, man. Even Sir, you know, the South Side created that shit, like made it. But we took that shit Put around. It on the big and, screen, yeah. And yeah. we took the took the L's, you know, niggas looking at us like we goofy. Like, uh, you niggas from the South with them big clothes on, you sipping uh you sipping cough sir, like laughing at us. Now we see these niggas with cups and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like so to see that shit is is amazing. Niggas come and get jury from here, you know what I'm saying? We know you seen us do it, you seen us shining, so you here. So all that shit we did that we don't get credit for, you know what I'm saying? Like, our jeweler's on West Timer now. I just tell you, my jeweler was on Homestead. He on West Timer now. He a millionaire now, you know what I'm saying? Think about that. Like, that's from us, our music, promoting this shit, putting it in people's face. You know what I'm saying? Now they got customers from all around the world. Pow Wow did the same for Johnny, you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, like, you know, I I know we trailblazed a lot of shit, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like I got a lot of bread off of this shit. Not a lot of accolades, but I got a lot of bread off the shit. And long term, I feel like, you know what I'm saying, me being a boss was the smartest thing I could have ever did. Like, I didn't get the instant gratification, the uh, push of, you know, when you do partnership with people, the big looks, you know what I'm saying? I ain't get a I ain't get a lot of that, but at the end of the day, I got the money. You know what I'm saying? And ever since I've been around, niggas know Slim for being the nigga who really out here getting it. You know what I'm saying? And that shit meant more to me than any hit record. And at the same time, I can still take credit for still tipping. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Speaking of that, I got the you know original still tipping right here. Let me yeah. pull this out right over here. Man. We got this, it. This is the original before. <laughs> Before the major deal, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's before. This is Mike Jones on this one. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah that's man. the one before. Who was at Asylum or Warner Brothers? Whoever picked it up. That's before that. That's the original. That's one. before they they could understand, man. That's before they they understood the uh, movement. You know what I'm saying? And I like the joke with the South Side and say, man, well, if the South Side wasn't hating, I would have been in a screwed up clique. We would have all been together. <laughs> well, I ain't going to lie. Y'all, you know, when you. We wasn't stealing their cars, man. Them dudes were stealing everybody's cars. They were stealing the North Side cars, too, man. You know what I'm saying? Some of that truth starting to come that's out. My, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, yeah, yeah, yeah you know. Yeah, you, yeah, it's starting to come did, out. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's just what they hustle was. But y'all like, niggas stole a lot of cars, too, though. the whole man. side for that, you know, and that wasn't what it was. That was just that neighborhood hustle. <laughs> That was that neighborhood hustle, man. They did that everywhere, man. You know, man. Yeah. You you said, uh, <laughs> you know, the South Side. Yeah, we did come, but truth be told, I mean, the North Side still. I, I, I always describe Houston like this. Like yeah. the foundation is, you know, rap like what Jay Prince created. You know what I'm saying? Facts, and the house and the culture. That's screw and everything. You right. know what I'm saying? But I mean, truth be told, this this Houston shit started on the North Side. You know what I'm saying? Like. With, yeah, with the with the, with the vision with the of rap a lot shit. Yeah, but nah, I be joking. You know, I'm talking about uh, really. Um, but y'all had other shit too. Like, what's some of the other stuff? I know, on like, that, even on that level, they wouldn't. You know, it wasn't the Houston culture as far as uh, you know, uh, screwed up click and Swisher highs. How it was really like yeah. South Side, North Side, this yeah. driven. Like they was lyrical niggas who was respected around the world. You know, the Ghetto Boys and. Rap a lot was on some like they was for real. Like you look at them niggas like they major artists. That's hip hop. That That's hip hop for real. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But on the um Houston culture side, you know, the swangers, all that type of shit there, you know what I'm saying? It was crazy, bro, like cause you know, at the end of the day, like you loving the Kiki songs, but you hear the haters like, God damn, <laughs> like I you know, as a young teenager on the north, it's like, what the fuck? I take this personal, you know. Cause you love your hood as a child you like that's my hood so it just you know drove me to man like you know let me you know create this let me do it my way let me not sound like them let me um you know just um represent man and, and put this motherfucking outside on the map and take this bitch worldwide you know what i'm saying so that was it you know a lot of that shit was the motivation man so i love this shit yeah. still to this day before we before we go to switch house though, because you said a lot of y'all history got lost. Like, 
I know about like uh, Trinity Garden Cartel and shit like that, but like, what's some of the other stuff that you was listening to that was coming from out there? Oh man, Little Rascal. Um, who else? Um, man, I don't know, bro. I don't know. If it, I mean, it wasn't a lot of rappers, like you know what I'm saying. Like that, I'm talking about like around when we was coming around. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's a lot of motherfuckers on enough. Um, what's my boy name? Not just D from Trinity Garden. Who? What's my boy in the group with him? I'm so fucking high. Ice Water Slaughter. Ice Water Slaughter, man. Like you know, all them. You know, but uh, I was around like at the studio with Mike, Mike B. Like way back when I was like 12, 13 years old in the trash. You know, me. This is before brother. you did the thing with T. Gray and before your boy. Before all that, man, I was in the studio with Mike B. Before all that shit, um, over there in Trinity Garden. I'm trying to with my brother Colin Howard Records, Cash Money Brothers. Ooh. No shit. Yes, way back we felt like Cash Money stole our name and everything. <laughs> No yeah, shit. Yeah, well, they, the cash money what was the CMB tape. was we from uh, New York. What was it uh, New Jack City? Wasn't they CMB? Right, exactly. Yeah. So my brother came up with the shit, but this was like before we heard of a uh, Birdman and all them. You know, I, mean, I say I'm twelve. It's ninety two, ninety one. You know what I'm saying? So uh, we got tapes though. It's, it's pictures of I got pictures of the tapes somewhere. You know, um, yeah. But we was Cash Money Brothers, Evil Mind Records and shit. Um, me and my homeboy Tony Mac back then. Yeah, so. All that shit. Way back then, I used to go to what's the one on the south side? Way out there, that shit felt like I was going out of town. They did the uh, talent shows. What stadium bowl and shit? Nah, it was some old shit. It was I forgot the name of that motherfucker. Some reggae shit. It was I think Wicked Cricket used to host the talent show or some shit. I don't know. I used to be out there lose every fucking week. I hate getting on that motherfucker. <laughs> go to school the next day like fuck. You know and this is at twelve. Now, this, Bro, this, is a this, little was, this is a little later. That was like about 14, I would say. 14, 15. I was in high school, so I would say ninth, ninth grade, around ninth grade. And this mm-hmm. is and this is around the T grade shit, or this is after that? This is before T grade still. So Oh, so T grade was like kind of right before Swisher House then. Right before Swisher House. T grade, Michael Watts, Run C, all of them used to be at the it was an all star club called all, not a club but like a little place that all the local high schools would go party at the all star so we would all go there i met t gray through like my homeboys his brother lee gray i used to run with his brother lee gray and stessel r.i.p like you know that was my homeboys we ran around so me and t gray would do stuff through that you know what i'm saying but yeah and then we did a couple songs together stessel passed away um then we did something and brought it to our store. I believe I performed at that motherfucker or something. And that's what got uh, Watt's attention. Bro, I'm so high. I don't even remember how. You know, you got to ask them. <laughs> them niggas way more sober. They were going to tell you the more clear story. But, yeah. So, when you, but, okay, you get, you get to Watt's attention. And then when you when you go to Switch House, it's you and Lil Mario? Mm-hmm. And, like, who out? Like, Me, this- Lil Mario, and J Dog, my first time. Lil Mario had been there before. I believe it was me and. J Dog first time, hmm. yeah. No oh, shit. So then when you get Swisher it. Nine Eight, that's the name of that one. The first one ever. It was on that. Dun 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 dun. Mm-hmm. dun mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, the my homies. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was 1998. I was 17 years old. Yeah. How many people was over in the Swish House at that time? Was it like a still? Was it a gang of guys and or it was just like a handful? It wasn't a lot of people. It was just us. And Lester Roy and Archie Lee, I believe, and maybe like Big Red. He had other, why well, I said random homeboys, he'll have come do some shit. You know, like Big Red, I forgot who else. Uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. Chameleon there, Pow Wow. Yeah, I know that was much later. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Mike Jones, none of them wasn't in there. Um, then after that, we got uh, Big Pig, AD, Big Tiger, all them. They came together as a, they all family, you know, so yeah. So, okay, but so you was talking about how you struggle, you know what I'm saying, losing at talent shows and all this other type of shit. But when you get to Switch House, it was like you, you was automatically on. If that was the first freestyle, that was that was a big deal, like that particular Facts. one. That's how fast it happened right there. Like, it was money. I've been doing, I was two for five and at the school, all kind of shit, trying to figure it out. Like, damn, my brother Ray probably was in jail, I believe. I don't know. Uh yeah as soon as i did that bitch it was money it was hey man 
you do this here, bro. Like, I ain't gonna give you no money, but you put, you bring these CDs, you sell these tapes for $10 and bring me back five. You sell the CDs for, uh, you know, 15 and give me seven or eight back, whatever it was at the time. You know, Watts told me that. Hmm. And I never stopped. So how much money would you see in at that time when you first started out? Do you remember? Just a couple thousand, like, you know, like eight thousand or some shit, like out the gate. Like it was crazy. Like for me, as I'm in high school, seventeen years old, like what the fuck? So then the shit just once I did that, it wasn't no stopping me. The money was the that was the motivation. Once I seen that shit is I can do this shit for real and not go to jail, what? Or if I do go to jail and ain't like selling dope, it's just like bootlegging or some shit, what? Hmm. I turned up. I was serious. Them niggas wasn't serious like I was. I believe, you know, personally, you know, mm. I was serious. Like, I was like, man, I'm finna, you know, I was trying to add it up, you know. So I was like, I got to shine in this bitch, you know what I'm saying? And that, and, and that's and when that, you bought your first car for that. Uh, off that shit, like, um, drop it. Probably I don't even know. Right after that, I had probably peeped the picture. It was then. It was to the that wanna be a baller cap, but the shit just kept getting bigger and bigger. Like and all these hoes is classics. And then, like, right, and then that's what I'm saying. Like and um, rolling strap is still tipping freestyle. That was like '98. You know what I'm saying? That's my first year. You know, so it's like all that shit was going, and that's turning into not only CD and tape money. I'm selling out at school. It's like 5,000 people in Eisenhower, bro. I walk in that hole. I'm selling everywhere I go. Niggas is looking for me. It ain't like I'm check out my demo. Mm -hmm. I ain't never go through that stage. Niggas is hey, looking for me. You know what I'm saying? And then, not only that, we opened up a store. So now we turning, you know, that into $15. And then... Now we going to different stores around the city and putting out with shit in them stores. When you say open up a store, you mean like you personally or like Watts had to switch a house store? Like how, what, no, you me me and my brother personally, like it was somebody we were selling CDs to, nigga had to go to jail. We gave him some money for that house. I believe I gave him like 20000 for it. It was already operating, you know, so we just bam, went in that hole. So now we got a store, you know, not only we, so now we selling to other stores, got a store, doing shows, everything keep going up because now we got down south on the radio. Oh, yeah. Now we got Okay, break. talk about that. Talk down about down south. I don't even know how that shit happened. I don't even remember it. Like No shit. I swear, like I just don't remember. But that was like I was 17, 18 when that shit. Then bam. Like it was just like I believe like shit started catching the fire. Like motherfuckers was just like, hey, he sound good. And they giving me a chance. Niggas started giving me chances. I was trying to shine. Like I said. Once I seen it, I was like, man, shit, let me go ahead and turn up on this motherfucker uh, down south for uh, Brazen Fades. That really took out, you know. But Bra you, you wasn't in high school when Brazen Fades. That was late on, though, right? You were still. Nah, I think Brazen Fades, I was in high school. If not my um, 11th grade, my 12th grade, yeah. Yeah. Like, that dropped on Shining and Grinding, I believe, like yeah. 99. I graduated oh, in 99. Oh, so did. Damn. I graduated in 99. Yeah, so I was in high school, nigga. Like, I got swingers from Mr. Davis, nigga. Like, the, the original swing. <laughs> you know, like, I got them off of Mr. Davis himself. <laughs> he know me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm in high school, nigga. Like, drop Rivy, pop trunk, topless dancer, parking in the school, teacher parking lot, nigga. Like, young, just out there, like, uh, diamonds on, diamond grill. Yeah. Did they give you special treatment like the, the administrative staff and all that? They knew you? it was real. They knew I wasn't selling dope. <laughs> they's hearing about me. You know, they saying that's my student. They get to brag on me. The love was there because they knew I wasn't on no dumb shit, you know. And I come to class and fuck you up on an assignment, you know what I'm saying? So they know I'm not dumb like I just graduated. I ain't never failed no class in my life, you mm. know what I'm saying? So it was love, you know. They knew I was selling them CDs. They was letting me get away with it, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like I was doing no bad shit. Yeah. So it was always cool. And, you know, um, Selective Sounds was right across the street. I wasn't interested in no sports because I was getting the bag and had too much shit going on. My apartment was right across the street. Like, I could leave school and walk to my, you know, apartment. So, you know, how that was lit. Mm. <laughs> so, and I'm a rapper in high school. It's like I'm having my way. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, early, you know, so it, it was, uh, yeah. Then what? What happened after that? Tell, tell the story about uh, 
how y'all end up leaving Switcher House and watch Kacha all over there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Trying to make something happen, man. <laughs> right. I guess we started turning up too much for Watts. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, so we were selling CDs and tapes, man. Like, we were selling them old, and we needed our orders, and Watts was moving slow on our orders, man. We like, hey, bro, we need this. Now we got habits, man. We, don't, we ain't broke no more. Like, we, we getting this type of money every month, and now we got these type of habits every month. You know what I'm saying? We can't be moving slow. We got to move. Come on, Watts, what's up? We did our order. We asked you three times. <laughs> <laughs> so we snuck in the office, man, and uh, we bought our own blank CDs, so we ain't steal from them. We bought our labels, and, you know, we just kind of put our own labels on our shit, made our own orders, and Watts walked up in there. We'll do that from midnight overnight when them niggas don't be in there. <laughs> How long was y'all getting away with this before he, before he caught y'all? It wasn't that long. We ain't getting away that long. It wasn't that long, bro. It wasn't that long. So um, he uh, catches it in the next day. You know, they changed the locks on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So it was over at that point. I was like, man, listen. I couldn't be at that point, bro. Like I just was in grind mode. I wasn't trying to hear it. Like nobody's finna stop me, and I have the most confidence in me. Like you know, I'm not finna let no nigga stop me or nothing. So immediately, me and my brother went bought some fucking American DJs. You know, you a DJ, so mm -hmm. you know how trash Cheap. that is. The cheapest you can find, <laughs> trash man. Is <laughs> trash is the one you can find. And I remember it was like Tupac and the Outlaw album. Yeah, it just came out and we just on that whole chopping that whole practice and we watch watch before we do this shit. We bought the little rolling board he had, you know what I'm saying? And our shit is trash, bro. It's <laughs> trash. But them, we, them early Boss Hog CDs, the quality, like I'll never quality, forget. I was at Lamar trash, and this cat bro. brought it through and he was like, man, Slim got his own company. They Boss Hog got lost. They put it in. And I was like, dog, the quality, the quality was shit, trash. Watts wouldn't help us. <laughs> 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 niggas, I don't got to figure it out, nigga. <laughs> niggas, like, figure it out. You see how niggas do a lot there, man. That's what I had to deal with my whole life, man. My whole catalog sounds suspect because we was trying, man. It was me and Ray Face, bro. I knew I had the right words to say, though, to them people. I said, man, I don't give a fuck, nigga. I'm finna go off on this bitch. And it's old. It's so, man. And not only now we got the stores we had, now we have all of the fucking stores, like every store, because now this is our shit. So at first it's like this in Switcher Highs, like everybody got their own stores, you don't fuck with their stores. Watts got his stores, you know, OG. And they, they the foundation, so they was the, they got a head on it, they had more than everybody. So um, now Boss How Got Lives, we get all the stores. So even though we trash, we making more money than we ever made. You know what I'm saying? Because now the whole game belongs to us. What would you say the jump was from Switcher House to when y'all jumped out there, like money wise? What you mean? Like what was what was the gap from saying? I okay, have we no was making clue, bro. Like I just remember buying a new six bedroom house, and now my yard looked like it looked now, back then. And this is at what age? Nineteen, twenty? Uh, I don't. I was like twenty one, probably twenty one. Because now we got uh. We got uh, because you had already done at this time though. Had you done the ESG thing yet or not? No, nah, I haven't. But now uh, I I did boss hog outlaws. Now we doing the ESG thing, so now we got get your hands up coming, and you know that's helping too. I'm doing shows with ESG everywhere, so you know now we doing boss hog outlaws, building our foundation on that shit. Sound trash, building us a team. We got J Dog, we got Killer Calion. Well, nah, that, I don't think Killer was there. It was J Dog, Sir Daly, you know. Just think about that, though, bro. Like, we building the right team over there, you know what I'm saying? 50 50 twins. I don't know. We got some classics, man. But the though, boss, the, but the whole thing with the boss, though, that was before they came over there, though, right? Or did, the boss, did the boss come when you first came? Like, what does that fall in all this? Because you're talking damn. about J Dog coming over there, but he was damn. still switching house, and like, they were all still over there when you did that, right? I don't believe so. I believe he was over there with us. I don't know, bro. That's a great question. That's how, how I be, bro. And that's how I, I don't stop. I don't even go and rewind, bro. I don't even look at old shit. I just keep going. But um, let me think. Uh, was J Dog over there with us? And then that shit happened. Yeah, yeah. I believe so. I believe he was over there with us. And then it happened. Yeah. So. Uh, I had left Swisher House for sure. 
out because that was part of the thing. Like it was part of the issue. I left Switcher House, started doing my own shit. Then they put out a CD, and um, and then I responded. Yeah. And that so, ended up being a big one for you. You came up over that. Man, and that's the first time. CD- no, so so before that, I had did Underground Hogging. That's my second. Like first, I did. I represent this. Matter of fact, I left that out. Um, okay, so I started out doing like a freestyle on the on the album, like a tape. Really, give me my credit. I'm the first nigga who made a mixtape album, bro. You can't, cause I'm bragging about. I got throwback footage of me bragging about this shit when I'm like 18. I'm the first nigga, if you think about it, who did a mixtape album, like just did nothing but freestyles of himself all through that motherfucker. Like I'm bragging about this shit on Game 101. So, so uh, first I had the like freestyles, the random freestyles. Then I did the I represent this. That changed my money up. Like that's mm-hmm. that was another level. When that shit dropped, it changed my money up. That was after the down south and all that shit, and it changed my shows up. So I started doing a lot of shows. But we just left that out over there. Was y'all going through Southwest with that? When you got to represent this and all that? Like, how was y'all getting it out there? Y'all was still just doing I was the still with thing? Swisher House when I represent this came out. That was hella early. That was like 99. Like, so, yeah, it was way back. Yeah. So, um, Underground Hogging was my second one. I did Underground Hogging. So, people was looking forward to that. You know, I haven't put out no album yet. You know, I'm just doing mixtapes. The only way you can hear Slim Thug chopping is chopped and screwed, you know, or whatever. So, um... Yeah, uh, I dropped Underground Hog and that bitch did good. That's when I moved into that house. So then I moved into that house and then them dudes dissed me. And then that was right after I just made a bankroll. Like, this how the shit go. You drop some, you got your first little, you know, like first week sale. The shit gonna be going up. You gonna make a bankroll. So I made a bankroll off Underground Hog and the hype of that. And then back though, like a month or two later, they came and dissed me. So I was like, "Damn!" I dropped the boss, and that was probably like one of the. But even that, it was because you said you had pulled up on swingers, and boys just wasn't really feeling that. And switch your eyes, man. It was just at a point, bro. You could just tell niggas wasn't happy for a nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> at the, it just wasn't happy for a nigga. And and you think, you know, everybody fuck with you. You think everybody, you know, down with you. And you start with some motherfuckers, and and you think it's real, but. At the end of the day, it just felt like niggas wasn't happy for a nigga, man. You know what I'm saying? I still feel like that in a lot of ways with a lot of niggas. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I've grown to learn that that's just niggas, you know, all around. (laughs) It's just going to always be like that. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I don't feel like, uh, I don't hold nothing against nobody or give a damn or, you know, even care about that type of shit. Like, we cool. I'm yeah, cool but it was what it was. Yeah. Yeah, it just, it just was what it was. It was just some young shit, really, pretty much. Some young shit, young ego rapper shit, shit that happened. You know what I'm saying? So, at the end of the day, like, God bless everybody. As an old nigga, you can't do nothing but look back and say, man, we created some history just being some dirty niggas, you know, coming <laughs> together. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, we made some bad motherfuckers, man. So, you know, salute to them fellas. Like, I don't be on here playing the boss, you know, and my <laughs> shit, trying to disrespect nobody or nothing, even though, like, that's, like, one of my most, you know, motherfuckers. Ah, you don't ever. Nah, I'm not that type of nigga, you know. But at the end of the day, that shit, just looking back at it, man, it just was a, a funny time to me, man. Hmm. It was funny. Because it's like, damn, it's like this, fool. I feel like I'm on an island. Like, you know, because you, I ain't the south side. I ain't screwed up <laughs> click within my own people, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, damn, it's like, yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, um, you know what I'm saying? A nigga so blessed that I feel like that's what come with it, you know what hmm. I'm saying? Did you ever, because, I mean, you probably one of the only people I can say yeah. that got, like, some type of tie to everybody that's on his wall. Did you ever uh, cross paths with Screw? Yeah. Uh, I met Screw a couple times through, like, uh, just I being outside, you know what I'm saying? Like, I definitely always, I been to his shop, you know, while he was there and shit. We shot um, Dirty, Dirty Third, Third, you know, all that mm. shit, yeah. Wait, that, I don't know. I I thought we had a picture. Somebody probably burnt that hoe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't find it. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I definitely met Screw. He showed me love, man. It was amazing, bro. Like he showed me love, man. Like 
you know, like I say, you made it on there, like the candy coated scratch. Right. That was on like That's maybe crazy, one of the last man. school tapes. Yeah. Like I, you know, like I say, even the shit that that was, that was just when we was so young. Even when they was so young, you know, I'm, I was uh, by the time I came around, them niggas was grown men on some grown shit. Niggas wasn't on no dumb shit. At the, we was all cool, you know. By then, you know, so. Uh, you know, it wasn't always like that. It was just like the beginning. You know, I was a kid when that shit was happening. Basically, they wasn't talking to Slim Thug when they was, you know, doing whatever. They was really talking to them niggas who was, you know, uh, the in niggas the streets who, and shit. who yeah. was in the streets. Yeah. So it wasn't nothing to take for real. Like, you know, it just was like, man, as a rapper, though, you like loving the culture. You know what I'm saying? It's Houston. You know, I love I love this shit. The freestyle shit. I love it, you know, uh, what Fat Pat talking about, you know. Don't leave us out, you know what I'm saying? Like so, that's what it was more than anything. Yeah, yeah. Man, uh, you mentioned Dirty Third, man. Talk about that, cause that was a, you know, being from the knobs, you and Lamario. Shout out to Rick, man, cause yeah. he didn't never leave us out. He was the nigga, who, him and ESG. We put together Braids and Fades, and that was hella early, you know what I'm saying? He put me in Dirty Third, me and Lil Mario, you know, put the North Side in there. So, shout out to d Rick for being a um, a real one and, a uh, you know, a trailblazer at peace. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, so. how, did, how did the ESG thing come along? Because wasn't it, like, the Boss Hog Outlaws, I thought it was kind of like a group thing, you know what I'm saying, when y'all first came out, or that wasn't really what it was? Nah, the Boss Hog Outlaws wasn't a group with me and ESG. It was, we named the album that, you know what I'm saying, but... Now nah, it was what it was, you know. Boss Hog Outlaws was what we came up with, you know. And on a, it was really for our like underground shit, you know what I'm saying? That's what the, that was the, you know, next movement from Swisher Highs, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And how y'all even made that, you know, when you started connecting with ESG to say, man, you know, we finna get together, do some songs, drop an album, we doing. Shit we was doing was working, you know. So that's what drove us to doing a project. We did Brazen Phase. And then we did Candy Coated Excursion. And uh, hands I was doing shit independently, like, you know, the boss way. He was trying to step into that role of being a boss. You know, he, had, he was signed to Rick Shop and other labels or whatever. And we got together and shot the dice on the project together because, you know, it wouldn't really affect nothing. You know what I'm saying? So we did that. Get Your Hands Up was successful. We was able to get money out for that and, you know, learn the game, you know, learn a lot of the game from that. So that's what, like, you know, got us started in the boss in the boss way. Yeah. Man, talk about because, I mean, we're saying all this stuff you done did, you know what I'm saying? But, like, even when it came time for you to get the deal, like, you would be going to, like, the studio with Toya, not even on no rapper shit, just on right. some, like, supportive boyfriend type shit. Right. <laughs> you know, but nah, that, that uh, you know, just being there, and then dude, they find out, like, oh, this dude, like, is a star at home type shit, like. Yeah, uh, man, right, it was like that, like, really, man, early, I saw the money, man, like, you know, uh, I saw Lil Jay getting that money, and I seen our rappers look, you know what I'm saying? So I always was in, in, uh, interested in being the boss, and um, I didn't really care about having no record deal, you know, because I felt like they was going to get the most, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't, that wasn't what I ever was looking for. Like, I seen that go bad so many times. I'm You got to understand, like, where I'm at now. When I'm dating Toya, I'm like... I'm in the game like this is around like the, you've already gotten rich basically right mm -hmm. so it's like i know my self-value like i'm getting i got shows all the time i'm selling a lot of cds and getting the most of the money you know like and i've been doing it on mixtapes too so i know how i feel that's the thing that's what the difference is with me like in a lot of rappers a lot of rappers was trained to say you know um I'm going to go sign with a label, you know, I'm going to go get a record deal, you know what I'm saying? And they're going to give me some money and then I'm going to be a rapper and work for them, you know. But um, I wasn't trained like that. I was I was more on, I want to be the record label. I want to, you know, do everything myself and get the most money and do all that. So that gave me a head start on a lot of shit thinking like that so early, you know what I'm saying? So I just kept like, you know, through through selling mixtapes, I learned my self value. Like it wasn't even an album, but 
I knew, hey man, if I drop this, I'm gonna make eighty thousand. You know what I'm saying? So when a label tell me I'm gonna give you two hundred and fifty thousand for four albums, I'm like, man, they don't even drop albums once a year. That's like eight years for two hundred fifty thousand. I make eighty thousand when I drop fake albums. Like what? <laughs> that don't make sense. Like now, nah, you know what I'm saying? Like it wouldn't. It didn't. It ain't impressed me, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, I'd rather get this money than go be famous, you know. And early, and I and you know what gave me the insight? I was seeing how rappers they weren't living like me, bro. Mm. Uh, rappers with record deals, they was on TV, but they wasn't living like me, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, Nah, I'm good where I'm at, you know what I'm saying? On a lot of shit. So I was out there just kicking it with Toya. She recording the album, and um. She tell me to get on one of her songs or whatever. She's like, hey, do a verse to this. I'm like, okay, cool. It was some Houston shit. So I was like, bet. So I did a verse, and he like, man, her manager like, damn, you rap? I'm like, yeah. So he was like, play me a couple records. I played them like Three Kings. I had Like a Boss, but on the Mr. Lee beat, you know, the Photo Pharrell beat. Um, uh, probably that song I had, Rockstar, and it was another song I had. Uh, damn, it was... a I don't know, I forgot the name of him. Yeah, anyway, it was like five songs. He was like, man, you know, uh, he wanted to play it for Jaha at uh, Giffen, Interscope or whatever. So, in doing that, and, you know, uh, we ended up doing a record deal, you know, through all that shit. So, just going through that little, being out there with her, recording with her, ended up leaving me uh, getting with Pharrell and all that shit there. Because the thing was, at that point, I was getting money. But I was like, okay, how long I'm going to be able to do this shit? Keep going in these same circles. It's going, but it ain't going further than right here. You know mm. what I'm saying? Because a lot of people didn't get the culture. You know what I'm saying? Like, until still tipping came, it, the, the culture was in a boundary. Like, of course you had people, certain people, certain places. Little pockets and shit. Yeah, yeah. pockets of people who would understand it and, and follow it. But the world was looking at us like we was goofy, you know what I'm saying? For a long time, for sipping cop syrup, listening to slow music. <laughs> they like, what the fuck is y'all, you know, what y'all slow out there? Being from the South, you know, it was a lot of hate, you know. Um, so uh, it wasn't really um, accepted a lot until Still Tipping came and kind of gave them a whole view of the culture. People swinging and banging and shit and, you know, like... It just gave him a different view of it, you know what I'm saying? And um, it took it a little further, I would say, you know what I'm saying? And shit, uh, I forgot what the fuck I was saying. I'm high. Nah, that's cool. Had, <laughs> <laughs> had, y'all, had y'all already done still tipping about when you, when you had got to the studio that time, or that was something that came like a little bit later? What studio? When? when this session with Toya had still tipping already been recorded and they here. Still probably. tipping was done. I don't even think Mike Jones was on still tipping originally. It was on the first me. version of it. Yeah, yeah. and then um, it was through Big Time. I did it on Big Time beat. You know what I'm saying? Him and Watts was doing the Swisher House album, and I, you know, I still would work with Watts even though I left Swisher House. I would still go do freestyles with Watts. I would still do you know songs with him. Just appreciative you know appreciative of teaching me the game you know what i'm saying alone you know i always felt like i owed him something because you know ever since i met him i've been getting money you know what i'm saying so uh you know uh that was for that you know that was for that project you know and then um mike jones started building the buzz up you know what i'm saying and then when he started building the buzz swisher house was pushing him so still tipping was taking off like, I, it was like 03, I believe, 0203, like, you know. And um, I already had a deal and everything, I believe, when it first, you know, really hit the waves. And um, I remember you being the first one out of Houston. To yeah. like, it was a big deal. Like, I remember my boy said, like, man, Slim just signed an Interscope. Gaffin. I'm like, no shit. And then it was with real. See, my yeah. thing on that was, okay. If I can do some shit with Pharrell, I can take my shit to the next level. I already got a catalog of shit I already did. If I can eat out for that and own that, and I can still do a lot of under independent shit. You know, I was telling, making the deal with them, you know, I can do a lot of independent shit through them too. I was like, bet, I can still do underground shit, everything. So I was like, cool. But did the, did the Pharrell thing, did they? Did you go in seeking Pharrell, or did they say, hey, it'd be a great thing to put nah, you in? Nah, that's a guy. Jimmy Iovine move. Jimmy Iovine, his whole little, <coughs> his little, uh, 
you know, that what he do is put a new artist with a big producer. You know what I'm saying? That's what he like to do. You know what I'm saying? Dr. Dre, Kendrick Lamar, Dr. Dre, the game, Dr. Dre, 50 Cent. You know, uh, he just like that's what he like to do. Put a big producer with an artist. So um, that was his vision. You know what I'm saying? And then Pharrell came to Houston and he was on his tour bus. He played me a couple records. And, you know, they was jamming, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, I'm with it. You know, in the in the mind frame of, I already be rapping on this dude's shit. You know, like, I be on <laughs> yeah. freestyles, rapping on Now I'm get my own shit, yeah. Now I can do, you know, and get to the next level and get the bitches. Like, you know, it's, it's a no-brainer. Like, what the fuck? This Skateboard P. So I'm like, cool, you know, uh, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? So we doing it. It was the probably uh, um, best process I've been through, you know what I'm saying? Being in the studio on such a high level, you know, with everybody, like it's Justin Timberlake in one room, Snoop Dogg next room, you know, whoever in that bitch, you know what I'm saying? Gwen Stefani, all kind of shit, you know, I'm in the, you know, I'm in rooms with different people. I'm sure he probably made the Beyonce play, you know, no telling, you know, with, uh, well, no, nah, I don't think he did that one. Check up on it, that was a little bit later. That, that was later. That was something I had did because they gave me a show. I did a show with them. That's how we did that one. But Gwen Stefani, the luxurious, mm -hmm. he made that play for sure. Like, you know, so just being with Skateboard P, you know, it's going to get you through a lot of those, you know. So it was a, you know, I got nothing but respect for him. He learned a lot from him, you know what I'm saying? He showed me a lot just being around him. You know, uh, what's, what's some of the things that you picked up on, you know, since you've been around? Man, just the dude just on another level, man. Like, he on another I don't even know where he at right now, you know what I'm saying? But he way passes in so much shit, you know what I'm saying? With the way he's smart as fuck, like thinking, fashion, you know, everything, you know, like everything. He just hella, he hella I elevated and all that shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like. I I'm I ain't come, shit we doing now. He doing he didn't have that shit back then. You know he was showing me that shit when I was fucking with him. A lot of shit people doing now. So it's like he took me to meet Nigo. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm over there kicking it with Nigo in Japan, bro, in Tokyo. Come on now, hmm. that's the king. Yeah. I'm at this nigga house. You know at his penthouse. We at Disney World and shit out there together. Like you know what I'm saying? I'm seeing a phantom with a Jacob the Jeweler emblem on that bitch thinking we the shit you know this asian got a snapper toolbox with 50 motherfucking watches in that bitch in the middle of his crib 50 chains in that hoe 10 fucking grills like everything's flawless like it's on another level like it's people we ain't heard you know we on this uh hood shit bro they ain't even looking they ain't even look at us for real like, they don't take us serious they got motherfuckers like lorraine you know, uh, diamond specialists who, you know, they don't take this shit serious we doing, you know, so it's like just another level. You shit you just see like it's inspiring, bro. You know what I'm saying? What um talk about uh the I ain't heard of that. Like how that was was it already a Jay Z record or like how that whole thing Yeah, that's actually <laughs> if you listen to it, it say like, change clothes, remix, huh? I don't take them out to eat. Yeah, that was Change Clothes Remix, you know what I'm saying? But he ain't use it. So, Jay, uh, Pharrell played it for me, and he was like, he wanted me to do it. So I did it, and, you know, uh, that's how that came about. I think yeah. I seen some footage one time, like, Pharrell had the idea to put the girl talking on, on the boss. Uh, right, you know? like a boss. Yeah. Yeah, just tell her. This is my driver, nigga, like, in L.A. Like, she my driver. She just drove me there, like, from the airport or something. And he like, hey, hey, you'll get in the boot and say this right quick. You know what I'm saying? That type of shit. Like, just, he's so free-minded. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like that. And, you know, I think that helped me be free-minded, too. So, you know, hmm. he kind of do what the fuck he want to do. So it's, it's, it's amazing being around that type of energy. Yeah. Is it anything that could have kept you in that in that major label system or where you just kind of like, hey, I see how this is and now I want to get back to kind of get my own money? Oh, man. Um... If it would have worked, you know, it would have, it would have probably, I would have probably stayed, you know. But at the end of the day, I don't look at myself as a radio rapper, you know. I don't look at myself as a rapper who's going to be making songs for the radio or even for the club, I would say, you know what I'm saying? So, me keeping it real with myself, I was thinking, 
you know, that ain't the right place for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, being with Pharrell was the right place, but over there where we was, they started moving slow. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not used to that. I'm used to being able to do whatever I want to do when I want to do it. You know, and that's what got scary to me. Like, hold up, they playing games. We done flew out here five times and they still ain't did nothing. Uh, let me up out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like, they like, what? Nah. I'm like, nah, let me up out of here, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, you know, thank God they did, man. I think I definitely made the right move. Like, Did they give you a hard time about trying to get out the deal? They just kind of keep trying to keep you in more so? That we had a few conversations back and forth, and I had to pay them some money to get out of the deal. But, you know, at the end of the day, they was cool, man. Like, they wasn't really tripping, you know what I'm saying? They understood where I was coming from because they knew I was already an independent person, you know what I'm saying, and move like that. So, uh, and they had made a lot of changes. Like, everybody who I, who worked up there, like the A&R who I, who I signed to, he was gone. The the main head person over Giffen was gone. Everybody I knew at the building was gone. So, it's like I'm working with a new A&R who's trying to show off on his first shot. And, he, you know, I'm it. Like, there's somebody who I already hear. He probably wants somebody. And he don't really understand Houston culture like that. You know, he just kind of, we kind of landed together. So, it just wasn't. You know, I was like, you know what, let me get up out of here and, and be in control of my destiny. Did boss of our bosses. And it was But even before that though, because you was doing the serve and collect, like talk about how you put that whole collective of those those particular group of guys. Cause yeah. again, you pull in, you know, Chris Ward, you know what I'm saying? Who's South yeah. Side guy. You know right. what I mean? Killer <laughs> Killer, he kinda did both sides, but he's still kinda like a South Side right, guy. Right. You know? Yeah, I mean, uh some great rappers, you know what I'm saying? You know, we like we started doing the underground shit together, uh, you know. And grew uh, grew through that and started making real music. We started doing the serving collects, you know. J Dog on there too, you know what I'm saying? J Dog, so, yeah, Sir Daily. I mean, Sir PJ Daly, the rap yeah, the rap hustler, PJ all the rap guys, hustler, yeah. all of man, Black, yeah, everybody, you know what I'm saying? So Les even yeah. came later. Later on, yeah, yeah. So uh, man, we just formed like a little brotherhood and man put out some music, man. That was, you know, uh, our our form of. Texas culture, you know what I'm saying, Houston culture. Like I say, I don't feel like um, we sound like nobody else. We put, we put our own little twist on whatever. You know, we did a lot of soul sampling through Mr. Lee, you know what I'm saying, and a lot of other shit. You know, it wasn't necessarily like, you know, everybody else shit. Uh, and we just created that, like, culture, that first 48, riding, you know, riding right on foes. Yeah. You know, all that Texas shit, you know what I'm saying, that Boss Hog Outlaw shit. It was something that people, you know, missed. They be hitting me up all the time. Man, you need to do a reunion. You know, I'm like, okay. You know, I'm not tripping. Hmm. Talk about it because you mentioned him, Mr. Lee, because Mr. Lee really was like the head of a, a lot of that sound. And, I mean, he did. He, he was doing stuff with everybody else, but y'all had a butt, like, just so, right. much, so much work. You know what I mean? Man, Lee, man, he probably got majority of my work, you know what I'm saying, through my career. He probably got, we probably got the majority of songs done together, you know. And like I say, that's because I feel like that was my sound. You know, I fuck with this. I like samples. I fuck with the soul. And Mr. Lee would give me exactly what I wanted. You know, it, it sounded like some, um, it didn't sound like club music. It didn't even sound like radio music to me. It sounded more of like, you know, just Texas, you know, sound like some culture shit. You know, I just felt like that's my way. I'm going to stick with it, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, through uh, Boss of Our Bosses, that shit probably, like, them Classic. songs was bigger than I Already Platinum. Even though I love the songs on I Already Platinum, the songs I did on Boss of Our Bosses was bigger than I Already Platinum. Thug, that's my, you know, I run, it's bigger, you know. So it's like I felt like I made the right move, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And, you know, that's what happened after that. I just went, you know, my own way. Do you have a like a favorite, you know, top five, a few records that you would say, these are my favorite Mr. Mm -hmm. Lee records that we done did? Mr. Lee, man, I don't have no favorite nothing, bro. Like, uh, period of nothing. Food, none of that shit. I'm not a favorite person. I'm like a vibber of what I like when I like it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I got a lot of different vibes, you know, so it's like uh, different shit when I want to hear it. Like, you got to think about it, man. The underground, um, the underground catalog alone is 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 longer than the motherfucker. Like you gotta think about it. Like 
it's a lot of underground music. I don't even know nobody who did that much underground music like since '98 to now, like consistently. You know what I'm saying? Even to you know the everybody's with the sauce and the, you know the shit with Dice Soho and all them. You know I just never stopped the King of the North. You know all the shit I did with them. You know I just always been you know. Uh, connected and trying to do Houston driven shit like I wasn't trying to like hey man let me go get my partners from Atlanta who cool and to do a song with me it was about hey man let's make the city strong you know what I'm saying let's do work with the city let's work with city producers let's work with city artists you know what I'm saying let's make Houston the shit you know what I'm saying and that's just what my mind frame I always been with it that was a question I was gonna ask if it was an in, in intentional thing because you gotta you do a great job of just going and say man I'm gonna go oh this dude over here doing this thing I like what he's doing let me go grab him and do you know what I'm saying some right. stuff with him. It ain't about clout to me, kid. It's about we from the city of Houston. Are you making some noise? Okay, I like it. So let me help uh, share my fans with you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you know maybe you can turn this motherfucker up if you know you the next motherfucker. You know, like it don't matter. I learned through the. Um, uh, the brotherhood of me, Mike Jones, Paul Wall, Chameleon Air, like it don't matter. The movement is 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 monetary, like you know what I'm saying. If Houston on, we all gonna be able to get some bread. It don't matter who leading this bitch, you know what I'm saying. And that's what people gotta understand. Like when the light on, like when I got a deal, everybody got deals. You know what I'm saying. So it's like. Whenever it's somebody out here who actively, you know, involved with the culture and just, you know, shining a light on it, everybody can eat, you know what I'm saying? So Yeah. Man, you had touched on it a little bit. We're gonna run through a couple of the people on the wild about the the Beyonce checkup on it, you know what I'm saying? How that whole thing. The Beyonce checkup on it came. I they wanted me to perform at their last Destiny Child show. So uh, I did still tip and I performed at the at their show. It went well, you know, the crowd loved it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the same dude who uh, called me about that called me the next day and was like, hey bro, like we gotta turn in this Destiny's Fulfilled album. We got a spot, you know, maybe you can get on it. Can you do this verse right quick and send it back, you know? Uh, bet, you know? Um, I think they even sent me two records. He, yeah, I did the first one, sent it to him, and he was like, hey, I got another one. I want you, you know, let do something to this one, you know? And um, that was checkup on it, you know? And really, I was the only rapper on there, you know what I'm saying? At first, it was originally um, just me on there. I don't think Jay-Z was going for it. <laughs> oh, yeah, because you were saying at the video, he was very much on some, like, you know. Right, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, you know, everybody heard the story of, uh, you know, like, he shut the video. I don't know, man, I'm just joking. Now. I'm yeah. just, you know. <laughs> but now, Bun B was saying that. Bun B was like, they was like, shut the video down, you know. Uh, they wasn't tripping over Bun B, I'm sure. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Bun B married, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, the young thug was in the building, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's why they had to put Bun B on there, because they couldn't have me on there, like just me by myself with that. Like, mm -hmm. nah, they wasn't going for that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I appreciate the opportunity. It's, it's uh, served me well in life. It was a blessing, man. Like, you know, number one. Man. And chick record, too, because you ain't typically didn't really have that lane like that. I ain't never get to explore that lane enough. As I look back as an older dude, I feel stupid for not, you know, because I was so perfect for that lane. But I was just so on that thug, that, what, that's oh, what, bitch this, bitch that, stupid shit. What is, because I be telling people, man, like, like Pro would do a girl record, you know what I'm saying? But it been so many people I, I done been in the studio with, and I try to put a girl record on them, and they, and they just don't bite. And I'm like, my nigga, if you look at your Instagram, yeah. And your likes and these girls liking these pictures they got these hard eyes they doing all that why not give them something that they can ride to you know what i'm saying like or they can vibe to or whatever the case like i don't know man that's a that's a houston thing though like typically niggas in h-town don't really do chick yeah. records like that man on the cool when i make music well i, I do chick records now now like yeah, sugar yeah. daddy slim you know and that's what i had to do because i realized that i created I said, man, you know what? I be so aggressive on women. Let me do something, you know, directly for women. You know what I'm saying? And that's what Sugar Daddy Slim came about as. But uh, naturally, man, you know, Houston is, 
a pimp city, you know what I'm saying? And a, a lot of our rappers who, have, who was before us was hard on bitches, you know what I'm saying? And <laughs> that's what we learned from, and that's the kind of, you know. Uh, that was the blueprint. That was, that was the blueprint yeah. we just followed, you know. So it just was natural, you know what I'm saying? But on a lot of shit, I don't even check cuss words. I don't never be in the studio like, oh, this going to be for the radio, you know. Like, it just ain't natural. I just do whatever natural to me, and then, you know, at the end of the day, we look at it. But I don't really make songs to, hey, man, this going to be my chick record, you know. Yeah, it's just whatever I vibe to. Yeah. Man, talk about uh, Pimp C, man, because he had a lot of favor, you know what I'm saying, towards you, man. Like like I say, one of my favorite clips is when he was like, I, I don't fuck with nobody but Slim Thug, you know what I'm saying, or whatever man, the fuck that was. That's favorite. one of my like, favorite. I got that in my favorites, in my phone, <laughs> and I drop it once a month. <laughs> nah, that shit just like gold, you know what I'm saying? You know, for somebody so uh, legendary, you know, somebody who I... You gotta understand, bro. Like, uh, I'm um, I'm 41, about to be 42. Like, riding dirty came out what nine five nine, nine six, six nine, nine six. six. So I was 15, 16, man. Like, you know, like this before I was Slim Thug. Like, I grew up on this shit. I was on Super Tight. Tell me something good. I was on all that shit. You know what I'm saying? So these niggas is already legends to me because they the kings of the culture. It's like. Pimp C don't sound like them New York niggas. Like, this ain't no hip-hop. This ain't bars. Nigga, this is Texas shit. Nigga, this is something we proud of. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like, man, to grow up, you know, idolizing them niggas, not just him, you know, a lot of niggas. Scarface, you know, Willie D, everybody, you know what I'm saying? So to grow up idolizing them and then now to be friends with them, you know what I'm saying? It was just like, it's crazy, man. It's just like, wow, you know what I'm saying? To grow up to have Pimp C say that type of shit. Like, it's like, what? That's what make me want to keep doing this shit. Like, it make me want to keep staying trill and, you know, representing for the culture because I know he would, you know what I'm saying? And that's what I feel like, that's what I'm trying to do. That's why I don't care about, you know, sounding like the youngsters or keeping up with what's going on right now. I just want to keep the culture alive, you know what I'm saying? Do some Texas shit, keep the culture alive, inspire the youngsters. I love the youngsters, how they ride swingers. They put their own twist to it when a motherfucker stick out a hundred miles. I can't drive that shit, you know? But at the end of the day, I love how they keeping the culture alive, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, that's what it's all about, man. Just keep this shit, don't let this shit die, you know what I'm saying? Because people minimize this shit, bro. But this shit, the biggest shit, bro. So mm. many niggas is living Houston culture with they cup in their hand, you know what I'm saying? Sounding like us, all that shit, bro. It's just, we just don't get the respect, you know what I'm saying? Because we not on the labels. Like, and that's the thing niggas gotta understand. Like, uh, being on record labels give you accolades. You know, they ain't gonna give you these accolades you deserve when you, uh, you know, choosing to be an independent boss, you know what I'm saying? You got your accolades is going to be your money you make, you know, the cars you drive, you know, shit like that. But uh, at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Like, all that shit just is fake anyway, you know what I'm saying? So I choose, you know, the real shit over the fake shit. All that shit paid for anyway, everything you're talking about, you know what I'm saying? Hmm. Anything that's successful from that end is, you know, long-term relationships you know hand-to-hand checks you know what i'm saying so you know i post my shit. i don't pay nobody to you know give me views and then so them views is real if that motherfucker ten thousand and that's what it was you know what i'm saying and i can live with that you know what i'm saying because i don't want to i hate bots in my instagram Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. get all that fake shit away from me man like let me talk to the people and i'm cool wherever that's at it ain't got to be the top you know, I'm cool wherever it's at, you know what I'm saying? So that's it, man, you know. And then at the end of the day, it's integrity, man. It's more about integrity to me. I think that that's what the next generation need to have more than anything. Like, you know, have integrity, man. Stop selling your shit off to these folks, you know, and they not even black, you know hmm. what I'm saying? Like, uh, don't you feel like a dickhead when you, like, 40 years old. I'm 40, man. Listen, I was doing this shit since I was ni- since 1998. Okay, let's say if 
I did the normal rapper shit. 1998 went and got me a record deal. My biggest songs was, you know, with these people, you know, and now, um, you know, 20 years later, like Khalees, they putting my shit on me, sampling my shit without my permission. It, it ain't your shit, though. It's they shit. Mm. It went five times platinum, but that's they shit. You know, that ain't your shit. You don't own it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And nobody have the integrity to say, man, that's fucked up. You know, I don't own my shit. It's some random motherfucker shooting golf, uh, you know, bragging on this shit. Yeah, I own, them. I own that. I own that master. It, it sounds so racist, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, like, nigga, I own your masters. He got to be your master, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like, to me, but that's because I started independent, and I, I get that, and that's how I think, you know, like, I don't, I don't, I think that you got to have more integrity than letting somebody who not even, you know, and your race own your art, you know what I'm saying? Or ain't of the culture at least, you know what I'm saying? Own your art. These, they just shooting the dice on you, bro. And, and they giving you the, the list and telling you, give them their money back, mm -hmm. you know, before you even can get paid, man. Like reevaluate the, the deals. The deals is fucked up, you know, at the end of the day, like it's, it, they it can is. help you. It is, even with like, with this with this shit I'm doing with these platforms, like I got people that's picking up, you know, Right. Platform, and I be like, man, I don't know, man. I just seen a bunch of niggas kind of just do their own thing, right. and like, you and might grow, not be the man. biggest starting and out, grow. but if you build and your grow. shit, eventually. If you think you about the, the dudes who do their own thing later on, become the most prosperous because you build in the catalog. Every check you make this month, a motherfucker can look at your old shit, and you still get paid off of that. People still jamming capital flows. I'm getting paid off of or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, so. The fifty thousand I would have got for the record deal would have been gone by now. That up, about man. The, about some of that <laughs> money, you know, and then looking dumb because these people who don't even love the culture or give a fuck about me, just bragging saying, "Yeah, I own that motherfucker." Yeah, hmm. that's that's what I'm saying. People don't have the integrity. They they'll say, "Man." Take this deal. They trying to give you some money for your music. Take the deal. Sweep that shit right for Just money. Just take the deal. Mm -hmm. But you know that's the that's what everybody used to. That's the programming of the world, man. You want to blow up? You better go get a record deal. You know sometimes it worked, bro. Sometimes some niggas get some money out of it. You know, so I ain't a hundred percent against it. And some people ain't business minded enough to run their own business. You know, so I ain't a hundred percent against it. But, uh, you know, if you want to be a top dog, you know, it's kind of hard to talk shit when you got a sugar daddy. You hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, it's kind of hard to brag about the car you driving when you got a check from a white man. You know what I'm saying? You can't be that tough or that big of a nigga if you got paid from somebody. If you got a boss, you can't be that big of a boss. You know what I'm saying? Like, and if you don't have that type of mind frame, bro, like, you know what I'm saying? You're going to forever be the bottom nigga of the worker. You know, and that's how I think, you know, and that's just because that's how I was raised, you know, and how I had to always do my shit. But, you know, uh, you know, I don't want to hate too much on people who do record deals because it worked for a lot of motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? And salute to the ones it worked for. But like I say, I think like this because I grew up on uh, Jay Prince, you know, seeing the independent, you know, and being in Houston, a lot of rappers, we was independent, you know, we started like this. So that's why we think like this. We was able to see our self value before selling out to the people, you know, like now you hear five of man, I got $5,000. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm You're saying? Trying to skip the line and that's what you, that's what you got. Man, yeah, yeah. it's like, you should have knew better than that, bro. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, who else? It's a million more, you know, people complaining about, you know, are back at the bottom, man. That's embarrassing, bro. They got to go back to the hood. You know, 10 years later, you got all these hit songs. You know, so. And nothing to show for it. And nothing to show for it. You don't own it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And that's what people got to have the integrity of, man. I'm going to own my shit. You know, I just ain't finna let nobody who ain't, you know, of the culture own my shit. Straight like that. Like, period. You know, that's just what my mind on. Yeah. Uh, man, you got a favorite Pimp C story for me to buy A favorite Pimp C story. Man, Pimp C used to just call me, bro, and just tell me all kind of shit, bro. Like, <laughs> you know, like, I don't even know. Like, man, he'll tell me so many long stories about, you know, all kind of shit, bro. Like, I don't even want to get specific on none of this shit. Like, you know, like, but at the end of the day, 
everybody know how Pimp C roll, man. He'll he'll hit your line and just you know how you rolling for hours, bro. He just talks so much shit about niggas that you don't want to share his story. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you want to just keep that to yourself, man. But yeah, man. Like I say, it was just uh, amazing to get accepted by you know the nigga. You feel like the king of Texas. I was like, man, that nigga. You know, showing me that love. He said that shit, and I got it on tape. Uh, I never lose this. You know what I'm saying? That was real. Like, how you going to have your idol saying that about you, bro? Like, come on, man. Like, what the fuck? That's crazy. That's like Jordan telling the nigga who hoop. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Nigga, I fuck with nobody but you, nigga. Like, what? This shit is crazy. Like, how I deserve this? (laughs) You know? But when you get, you know, when you do your own thing, bro, I believe that's the rewards that come to you. You know, when people see you not clout chasing, you know, you really, you know, a solid person and about what you believe in. You know, I believe those type of blessings, you know, come to you. So mm. that's what it's about, man. Staying on the good side, man. Having a good name, you know, throughout it all and just, you know, keeping your shit good. Yeah. Clean. Yeah. Well, man, I appreciate you coming through. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate uh, y'all always just looking at, you know what I'm saying? Appreciate y'all letting the north side up in here, man. Yeah, we go. finally did it, north side. There you go. I can't believe it. Somebody hit me with that shit. She said, man, Snoop Dogg said, Donnie, you don't have nobody from the north. So I said, man, I can't believe this nigga, man. He's one of the I first people I called, man. man. Nah, I love nah. it. Nah, I love it, man. I love the, you know, the south side stories. You put a lot of dudes, you know, you know, hood legends on here, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I heard about. You know, from the South Side, I get to hear him, you know, tell a story. I'm a fan, though, bro. I, I definitely love, you know, the culture of it. You know, how they telling all the stories of, you know, uh, that's the first candy car, whatever, you know. All that, man. Shout out to everybody who be on here, man. Uh, you know, speaking the history of Houston, man. Because really, like, that's what this is. This is the Houston history book, man. You know what I'm saying? We can't depend on nobody else to give us the history. So it's important that, you know, you know, we have people like you who give a platform for, you know, dudes who legends in the city, rap or not, you know, a, a voice, you know, let them come tell a story. Nah, I That's appreciate real. it. Matter of fact, man, I got a little something, man. You know what ah, my boy got gifts. I love man. You know what I'm saying? I, I appreciate you, <laughs> appreciate man. Appreciate that, man. Keep bouncing up on him, man. I can't wait to tell you shit like Arsenio Howe, man. My nigga, I already went. Hey, man. It's, uh, yeah. Big Slim, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's Donnie Houston Podcast, man. We up out of here. That is. Subscribe to the Danny Houston Podcast, man.